So today we're going to talk about deep learning images for Google Compute Engine. And uh, this is an interesting topic, uh, and nature of this topic is interesting. M many meetups and many activities usually show by the end of the activity how to build something, something new and cool. But deep learning images is a tool, tool that you have to use in your own projects. So probably today we're not going to cover uh, one particular cool thing that you can build. I will try to explain a tool and I hope you guys will know how to utilize this tool in your own projects. So, while we're going to speak about the deep learning images, time to time we will be using different commands that simplify my life uh, when I'm working with deep learning images and actually just Google Compute Engine. So this is a link on the GitHub page that has exactly all the commands that I will be showing today. Uh, this link will be in the follow-up notes on the meetup, so like if you don't have a laptop and don't want to write it right now, it's absolutely okay. This is QR code on the survey, but I will show you survey slightly later. You will see this QR code again. Uh, let me start with answering one main question. What is deep learning images? So deep learning images is basically set of different VM images that has everything that you need for doing your deep learning uh, research uh, out of the box. There are several key things here. This is not a one, one image for virtual machine. This is a set of images. We actually have uh, uh, different images. This is a graph that describes all of them, and we will come back to this graph uh, later on. But just a key point, this is not just the one image. The second key point is that it's working out of the box. So what does it mean, and why it's actually important? So let's meet Bob. So this is a Bob. Bob wants to do a deep learning, right? To do a deep learning, he wants to build his own virtual machine that has everything that is needed for deep learning. Uh, in order to do so, if the Bob wants to, do, uh, to use a TensorFlow and a GPU, uh, he actually needs to figure out which particular version of the CUDA is required by TensorFlow. Uh, if any one of you in the past have tried to set up yourself TensorFlow with CUDA, you probably do know that even figure out which exact version of the CUDA is required is not a trivial task. By the way, how many of you guys uh, set up TensorFlow with GPU yourself on your local machine, Mac OS, or, or in the cloud? Okay, quite a few. Good, so you know the pain. Next, when you figure out the CUDA, you need to know which exact driver your CUDA is using, and you need to install that driver. Then you can install CUDA. Then you need to figure out which exact version of QDNN is required by TensorFlow and install it. And NCCL, starting with TensorFlow 110, it will actually not work if you're not going to install correct NCCL binary. And then you can finally install TensorFlow. And if something goes wrong, probably it's not going to, to work at all. Okay, so let's say our Bob has completed the setup of the VM with several uh, GPUs V100. And the setup looks like this. So this is exact setup that the Bob has completed, TensorFlow 1.9, uh, CUDA 9.0, QDNN uh, 7, no NCCL installed. Reasonable question to ask, is this the best possible configuration that give you the most uh, uh, out of the money that you're paying for the instance? So let's have a look for the baseline. So this is baseline of the speed. Uh, this is the configuration that we just discussed that the Bob has. If you switch to QDNN 7.1 and latest nickel, you will have 10% uh, performance boost on top of what you had with original configuration. So the one, one might think, okay, let's just use latest CUDA, latest driver, latest QDNN, and just forget it. It will give me the maximum performance. Uh, even though this thought might appear, when the CUDA 9.1 was released, you can see that 9.1 actually slows down the TensorFlow. So if you, use, uh, if you used to use the latest one by the time of CUDA 9.1 was out, you are not using the best possible configuration. And now if you're using latest 9.2, you actually have 15% performance boost. Okay. Uh, how the Bob actually can figure this out, which of the configuration is the best for his particular instance. If you want to figure this out, you need to compile TensorFlow. There is no other way to use different CUDAs uh, except to compile it from the source. The official binary using only CUDA 9.0, period. You cannot use anything else. Then you need to run an experiment with your particular model on the instance to figure out whether this new TensorFlow that you have compiled actually give you any performance boost. 
And you need to do approximately, you need to build approximately 12 binaries. You have three different CUDAs, you have two different CUDNNs, you, uh, you have two different NCCL options. And I'm not speaking about using Python 2, Python 3. So 12 binaries that you need to compile from source. And if new NVIDIA stack is released, or new TensorFlow is released, you need to start all this from scratch because performance actually do change uh, with the new stack. And this is exactly where my team come to play. We are uh, focusing uh, precisely on figuring out which particular configuration of deep learning, deep learning framework will squeeze maximum performance out of the hardware that we have on Google Compute Engine. So we're trying to figure out with each particular new release how to compile it so you will get maximum out of your money. If we compare what we have on the Google Compute Engine within our images to official TensorFlow that you can just download, you will see the difference with CUDA. We're using 9.2, while TensorFlow has 9.0. We have the similar QDNN. We're using Nickel. Actually, 1.10 official also starts using Nickel. We're using MKL. MKL just for CPU instances. And even if you don't know what is MKL, MKL on non-GPU instances can give you up to five time performance boost. Like five time is, is just crazy when you, when you have something that works that fast comparing the official build. Okay, so this is what you get inside of the images. Already pre-built, configured, and ready to work. Now, uh, one may ask where these deep learning images fit uh, among all our other products. We have a Kubeflow, we have a machine learning uh, engine, uh, we have a call up and all other different things uh, that we're providing on the market. So if you look on this magical line of different products, let's say the leftmost side is a fully managed solution. Uh, something like uh, uh, machine learning engine or collab. And the right hand side is a solution that you have in your data centers, your machines, and basically somewhere over there on the right each side we have a Google Compute Engine where you can spin up the machine, do whatever you want. And probably somewhere there we have a Kubeflow with Kubernetes. It's not entirely fully managed because you still have access to the machine on GCE. Um, even if you're running Kubernetes. And let me show you the quote of this nice guy. And also, who do remember when this quote, uh, what was this quote about? Who do remember this quote at all? It, it's an old quote, it's okay. Okay, okay, I see one hand, yeah. Uh, close, but uh, actually, maybe he said it twice, so who knows. <laughs> uh, but one thing that when he mentioned this is when Google C Cloud was initially released, we had only one offering. We have App Engine. App Engine was a really nice technology. It was the first serverless technology on the market out there. But the thing is that the customer were not entirely ready. Uh, they did not have resources to invest to move all in at that time on the brand new, new approach that they never, uh, never have seen before. So then uh, Eric Schmidt mentioned that, okay, yes, we, we, we do have this bright future, but we also need to meet our customer where they are now. And then Google Cloud actually introduced the Google Compute Engine. So this is where our deep learning images are right now. They're in the spot where you have your own solution, you have your own research uh, files, logic, uh, you have your own spin-up cluster solution that you do not want or cannot right now to move anywhere. You cannot invest right now, but you have a lot of legacy. You need to run it somewhere. So if you do need to run it with TensorFlow or with GPU, just GPU, you are our customers because we will produce the best image that can handle it. Okay, how to use it? We have several yeah, uh, ways to use our images. Uh, actually, two main, uh, main possible usage. We are, uh, we are the UI or the CLI. UI is pretty simple and self-exploratory. I'm not going to actually touch that part. I will focus on CLI, command line interface, and the stuff that you need to, that you need to know. So first thing that you need to do if you want to create an instance with deep learning image, figure out which particular flavor you want to use. This is graph of the current flavors that we're providing right now. 
so as you can see, we're supporting two major frameworks, TensorFlow and PyTorch. And if you need something custom, anything else, literally, that uh, requires CUDA, we have uh, common uh, flavors with different versions of uh, CUDA. Uh, so first of all, you need to figure out which particular flavor you want to use. Uh, this is also called image family. Uh, in this particular example, we're using family TensorFlow latest with CUDA 9.2. This is by family specified. And how many of you guys uh, uh, creating, uh, have created, have played with instances on Google Compute Engine or any other cloud providers in the past? Quite a few, good. So if you're creating instance uh, in Google Compute Engine, you have this ability to specify family of the images. Uh, you can think about family if you have used Docker is a tag that always points to the latest particular con uh, Docker container. And the reason why I stopped here, I want to speak about the problem with using image family or Docker container tags. The thing is, if you always pointing at latest, there are chances that something like this will come up eventually. Uh, this is NumPy community that they basically broadcasting to the world that they're releasing new NumPy, and these uh, new NumPy have introduced uh, a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of cleanups, and this may impact a lot of customers. And I actually, do know customers who got impacted because of this update of the NumPy, precisely this one. If you're using family or if you're using Docker container latest, probably the latest update already includes this NumPy because of the security fixes uh, that this NumPy has. And it probably uh, will break you. So if you're using uh, either Docker or our images, you probably need to switch from using family directly on your production to using the following pipeline. Three steps. You're getting latest image from the family. You're testing it with your solution, and then you're using it in prod. Always like this, never, please, never use family directly if you're using it on the production. Production, it doesn't mean something that serves traffic. For me today, production is my, uh, my demo that I'm going to show. And for my demo, I'm going to use particular exact image. There is a command that allows you to extract exactly the image name. And for today, I'm going to use TaserFlow latest CPU and exact hash. Uh, this is the image that basically I'm going to use. And now I'm switching my command from family to actual name. Second one, uh, image project. Uh, we have some customers who actually, when they're creating an instance, uh, setting project to their project. But uh, uh, this is the project that hosts the images, which is ours. Uh, maintain policy. The thing is, if you're using GPU, uh, your instance cannot be live migrated to another hardware machine. This is very important. You need to know this and take into account. If you're using GPU in case of maintenance, the only way is to actually terminate your instance. Next part, if you want to create an instance, you're, creating, uh, you're setting up how, uh, what the accelerator then you want to use. Uh, this is an important part because you need to not only to choose particular accelerator from the four that we have, you need to educate yourself about the regions that they are exist. If you specifying the wrong region where accelerator doesn't exist, it will not work. And after setting the correct region, the correct accelerator, you need to set up the correct amount of accelerator that you will attach to the instance. If the amount does not exist, again, you cannot create the instance with, for instance, uh, uh, Tesla V100 and f uh, four Tesla V100. Uh, we not uh, when we do not support this configuration yet. And the last one, this part is basically giving permission to Google on your behalf to install Nvidia driver. The thing is, images come with pre-installed pre CUDA, CUDNN, everything pre-set up and tested, except the NVIDIA driver. There are some reasons why it's uh, uh, been done this way. I'm not going to dive to that particular region, uh, sorry, reason. But uh, without this flag, you will not have NVIDIA driver on the instance installed. Now, what else you can, uh, you can tune? Uh, you can set preemptible flag if you need. Preemptible is basically, uh, who knows the concept of preemptible instances? Okay, so Google Compute Engine had this concept of preemptible instances where you actually buying the same instance but for the cheaper price with only one, one uh, uh, downside. This instance can be switched off at any point of time. Um, 
So yes, uh, I personally time to time running preemptable instances and I train a lot of model there, but time to time it might be switched off without any um, any uh, 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 how do you say it? Anyway, uh, now uh, keep in mind that if you have a quota when you when you're creating a GPU, so you need to request a quota. Quota for preemptible instance are not equal to quota to normal uh, normal instances. If you have uh, quota for NVIDIA P100, you do need to have quota for preemptible NVIDIA P100 in order to start preemptible instance. Next, if you're going to run the command like this, you will get the smallest possible instance. I think this guy has one core and uh, less than one gigabyte memory. So if you want, you can attach any supported machine type. Uh, next, you want to set, uh, you have the ability to set up a uh, type of the disk. Uh, this is actually SSD. We do have support of local SSD disk, which, which are way faster. Uh, SCSI disk, this is basically some of the measurement and the speed that we can guarantee you with the local SSD disk. And the most importantly, we uh, have introduced new type of uh, local SSD disk that actually using N uh, NVMI uh, connection to the uh, to the instance, and uh, it gives you so the one on the top with the old one, the one on the bottom with the new one. I wouldn't say twice uh, faster, but significantly faster, which is important if you're training something that requires read data from the uh, from the disk. And the last one, scopes. These scopes is actually required uh, uh, if you want to use TPUs. And here, I'm actually going to switch for just a second uh, to the console. I'm going to create TPU node. I'm going to create TPU node because we're going to use it in uh, several minutes. And since it takes to create a TPU node several minutes, let me just start my TPU node right now. And let me press uh, setup. Uh, network and press create. Uh, now the question. Uh, sorry, uh, when you say when you're specifying this metadata that I just mentioned, installing video driver through, you're giving permission for the Google to uh, install driver for you. A lot of the customers who actually has uh, um, uh, a cluster with many machines in the cluster, they are kind of critical for the time to boot. If you have uh, four machines, each of the four machines has eight volt of V100, and you have time to boot equal to three minutes, you're already paying for 12 minutes, yeah, four machines, uh, 12 minutes uh, just for boot time. So one of the common question, okay, how I can reduce time of the boot for my machine? And the answer is simple. Uh, we getting the image that you want to create instance from, from the Google Cloud. We can create deep learning instance. We're waiting until the driver is installed, three, five minutes. It's uh, horrible, we're working on this and this will be improved. Uh, stopping the instance and creating own deep learning image out of that instance. That's simple, five step and you have your own image and that image will have this famous 15 second uh, uh, startup time that GC uh, gives you on other images. Okay, now the main part. Let's actually see how we can use it. Uh, the first I will show you Jupyter Lab. Who have used here Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab? Nice. So the most important part is Jupyter Lab. So let's actually create the instance and uh, use it. So I have copy pasted one comment, exactly the comment that I just showed you um, on the slides. Let me make it bigger, 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 bigger. So I have my image, I have instance name, I have Dawn. Uh, let's go and create it. Let's wait. It should take maybe 20 seconds or half a minute max because this is a CPU instance. It's not going to install uh, to install the uh, NVIDIA driver. Uh, this is a comment that I originally showed to you. These parts are not required if you're, if you're not using GPUs. Uh, so basically this is the, the end comment. Okay, let's see if the instance uh, show up. Nope, usually it's faster. 3D, 40 second. Do, 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 do. Okay, uh, while we waiting, this is a small improvement. One of the comments that I mentioned to you on my GitHub, uh, comment that allows you to SSH to the instance, it's just slightly nicer to say GSSH instead of GCloud, compute SSH, and then name of the instance. Just a small improvement that you'll find on the GitHub page. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
in order to connect to the instance, you will have to run this GSSH instance name specified Dawn and the port mapping. This is the only one thing that you need to do after your instance is up in order to start using uh, JupyterLab. Instance is up, so let's actually let's actually do it. Let me copy paste my comments. Uh, we connecting to the images live. Uh, let's go to the browser. Let's open localhost 8080, and here's Jupyter. You have a Jupyter if you would create the instance with GPU. You will have GPU with V100. You literally don't need to do anything else except uh, starting your instance. We're already uh, spinning up the Jupyter in the background that is listening on port 8080. The only thing that is left to do for you is actually uh, to open your browser. That's literally it. Uh, now, next use case. Let's Next use case is the call-up. Who have used call-up? Okay, so for uh, those of you who have not, let me show what call-up is. Call-up is the Google service that basically is a notebook at the cloud. Uh, it's very similar to the notebooks. Uh, it actually pro pro provides similar use case, but it's completely hosted, so you don't have a machine behind, but this creates some implications. Let me show you exactly the implications. So if you have a Google Cloud project and you have your machine, you have TPU inside, and you want to use it with the collab, you cannot, because the collab doesn't have any notion about, uh, uh, about Google Cloud project. It does not understand that you have a Google Cloud project. It cannot connect to any resources there. However, you do have a laptop, and your laptop do have a connection to your instance with port mapping 8080 that we just saw, uh, precisely for the reason of op opening JupyterLab. And your instance do have connection to GPU. So now the last part that is missing is to connect collab to your laptop on port 8080. And this is exactly the functionality that we have released uh, several weeks ago. We now have the ability to use our deep learning images as a backend for the collab. And it works very, very simple. Um, let me go back to the collab. So this is an official collab. Let me, uh, let me increase the font. Let me double check that this is official collab. Let's see version of the TensorFlow that actually installed here. Do, 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 do. It's doing something, and I hope it will eventually will work. It should be 1.9. Yes, it's 1.9 because it's official version of the cloud. Now let me uh, press connect to the local runtime. Basically, what this will do, it will connect Collab to my local runtime, uh, and the port is 8080. And my machine right now on the port 8080 has a mirror of the port 8080 of Deep Learning uh, VM instance that we had. Let me press connect. That's it. Now the collab is using remote machine, uh, and uh, therefore we will have TensorFlow 1.9 that we just have released in our VM images yesterday, together with TensorFlow 1.10. So yes, 1.10, by the way, got released if you uh, are following on the news. Uh, this basically means, so now you can use Collab with anything you want, including PyTorch, any possible GPU, and even TPUs. Uh, since, as I said, now we're using Deep Learning Image as a backend, let me create a brand new uh, notebook in the Collab. And just to show that we do have a TPU, access to the TPU, I will run one cell. And we can run it here, only one cell that will connect to the TPU. Let me first uh, get my IP address. Oh, it's the same, 10.0.101, uh, yes, it's the same. Yes, it's actually connected, so it works. So now you can use Collab with the TPU. As I said, you can do whatever you want in the Collab uh, with Deep Learning Images, PyTorch, uh, any possible uh, GPUs. Now, uh, another question that we usually have uh, from the customers of the VM images, how do I do Anaconda? I want to use Anaconda and this is nice. Uh, the Anaconda scenarios has some problem and the reason of this problem, if you install Anaconda, if you're creating a new virtual environment inside of the Anaconda, 
you need to install TensorFlow within that environment. Uh, how do you do this? If you're going to install official TensorFlow, it will not work because official TensorFlow requires CUDA 9.0 and we have 9.2. Uh, in order to support this, we are actually providing a binary, our Google Compute Engine optimized binary that are pre-baked inside of the image. So you will have the ability uh, to install them. So this is a small script that we do have on the official documentation that basically setting the pass uh, that we, where we pre-baking the binary and then you just can run pip install inside of your Anaconda environment. Um, okay. Next, how you can get help if you're stuck? Uh, we have a many different channels to support you guys. Uh, we do have official docs, of course, but if you want some uh, something else, uh, I have several blogs when I actively adding uh, different use cases for our images. We do have dedicated Stack Overflow tag, which we actively monitoring. Uh, please do submit questions there. We do have a pretty active Google group with different users who might help you even before I and my colleague will, will spot the question. Uh, you can always ping me even on personal Twitter. Uh, I would really appreciate any questions. You can send me a mail and uh, I, I, will, I will answer any possible ways for you guys. Okay, uh, in short overview, uh, deep learning images is the pre-baked images that has everything ready to start with different IDs, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook, uh, Collab Backend, and almost any framework that you can, uh, that you can imagine. Now, uh, this is the survey, which is really, really important. If you can, guys, help us to understand what you want to see in the future version of the, uh, of the VM images, what you uh, want us to add as a unit test, which case scenario you want us to support, please do participate in this survey. Uh, thank you. Then this is uh, all from my side, guys. Thank you for coming. I hope there is more pizza still left. And I hope to see you next time. <laughs>